making a modded Minecraft server. That's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now, right up front, I do want to mention that the server we're making in this video is not a 24-hour server. It's using your own computer's resources, and modded servers require you to have a pretty good computer because mods are super resource intensive, especially if you're going to be playing Minecraft on the same computer that you're hosting the modded server on. And this is only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust because this is using your own internet connection, meaning anyone who gets the IP address of this server can do things like DDoS you, which is basically hit your internet offline and figure out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates. Now, with that being said, what if you do want to host a server and not have to worry about the hardware, not have to worry about your internet privacy or anything like that, and on top of that, it's just simple, it's easy, and you don't have to worry about anything except adding the mods to the server and playing Minecraft. Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in at the first link in the description down below to break down .xyz slash simple. There, you'll be able to super easily make a Minecraft server running Forge or Fabric, whichever mod loader you want, or if you prefer a mod pack, there are hundreds of mod packs with one click installation, meaning that you can easily select a mod pack and start playing within minutes. So no matter what you want to do to your server when it comes to mods, whether it's add individual mods, run a mod pack, or anything else, you can easily do it at Simple Game Hosting. And if you do have any issues along the way, there's expert live chat support there to help you out. So go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your Minecraft server on high quality hardware without having to worry about security or anything like that, and easily add mods, plugins, and mod packs. Again, that's the first link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash simple. Nevertheless, what if you don't want to host a server on Simple Game Hosting? You want to host one on your own computer. Well, let's go ahead and jump on into it. First things first, we're going to need to download the Forge Mod Loader because that's going to basically be what mod loader we're using. If you want fabric mods, well, guess what? We've got guides on that as well. So be sure to subscribe for those. We've got one updated one for 1.20.4 coming as well as a past tutorial on how to add fabric mods to a server. But nevertheless, here we are on the Forge page in the description. This is the second link down below takes you here. Everyone who joins the server needs all of the mods installed locally, as well as you need to put them on the server. So this guide is linked down below because it will help you get the Forge server files, but you can also send it to your friends because they need to install Forge and every mod you add to the server locally on their own computer as well. Unfortunately, that's just a limitation of mod in Minecraft and there's nothing we can do about it. But nevertheless, once you're here, go ahead and scroll down, click on download Forge here. You'll be taken to Forge's official download page. You want to come over to the left-hand side and click on 1.20.4 and you might have to click the 1.20 and then 1.20.4, but once you see MC 1.20.4 here, come under download latest and click on installer. That doesn't take us off to add focus. We're stopped! Don't click anything on this page whatsoever. Do not click a single button on this page. Just wait about 10 seconds. And then in the top right, you'll see, and then in the top right, you'll see a red skip button appear up here. Click on that red skip button and then Forge will download. As long as Forge is in the title, you're going to go ahead and keep or save this file depending on your browser. But as you can see, Forge is in this title, so we're good to keep or save it. I've downloaded it before, so I've already done that, but you may need to keep or save it. Nevertheless, we can then go ahead and minimize our browser. And what we want to do is create a new folder on our desktop. So right click, new folder, and I'm going to name this our Minecraft 1.20.4 Forge Server. Right, so that's what we're gonna name that. You can name it anything. You can name it simplegamehosting.com if you wanted to. It doesn't matter what you name this. And then what we wanna do is go ahead and move that installer file we downloaded to our desktop. So for me, it's gonna be in our downloads folder, but for you, it may be wherever your files normally download to, most likely the downloads folder. Drag that to your desktop. And then once it's on your desktop, we wanna open it. Now, for me, I know I can right click, click on open with, click Java, click OK. But for some of you, that's not going to work. And what do you do if this won't open? You don't have Java. Well, you need to download Java 17. It's required for Minecraft mods. It's required for Minecraft servers. So it's definitely required for modded Minecraft servers. You need to come here, get Java. Once you've got Java installed, you may need to run the jar fix as well. That's going to take all the jar files and link them back to your computer, making them work happily together. But first, download Java, then run the jar fix. Nevertheless, we can go ahead and minimize our browser here. And we want to open up that Forge installer. Again, right click, open with. Java and click OK. Now, first things first, you need to install Forge locally. So click Install Client, click OK, let that install. Once that's done, go ahead and click OK here. And now what we want to do is open up the Forge installer again. So right click Open With Java, click OK. This time, we do not want to click Install Client. We want to click Install Server. This red box will appear. That's normal. Click the three dots. And then on the left-hand side, select Desktop. Then find your Forge server. For me, that's Minecraft 1.20.4 Forge server. This folder we created in our background. Click Open, and then go ahead and click OK. It's not going to install Forge into that folder. It's going to go through every single step of it, download everything, install it, and get everything well installed there. Once it's finished, you'll be able to start this server. But 
your friends won't be able to join it. So let's go ahead, start the server, have you join it, then we'll show you how to let your friends join it. But as you can see, successfully downloaded Minecraft server and installed Forge, click OK. Now what we want to do is open this up. In order to start this, what we need to do is create a run file, run.bat file specifically. To do that, you want to right click, create a new text document, and then you can leave this called new text document. Open this up and then paste in this code from the description. What are these codes? Well, there's two of them. Here they are in the description down below, four gigabytes and six gigabytes. And this corresponds with the amount of RAM you want the server to have. You really can't even start and run a modded server with mods without four gigabytes of RAM. A lot of modded servers need 10 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. So starting with four, upping it as you go along can be needed. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and just use four gigabytes, which is the code that I've pasted here. It should start with Java. It should end with pause, right like so. Then go ahead and click File, Save As, and then you want to name this run.bat. So the file name is run.bat, and the save type as is all files. So file name, run.bat, save type as, all files. Click Save, and now we have this new run file. Now yours may not have .bat at the end. If it doesn't, come over to the top and click on View, and then make sure File Name Extensions is checked. As you can see, mine's now just called Run. So make sure that File Name Extensions is checked, that way we can see that. And then what we want to do is rename, this is the last step, Forge here. So as you can see, it's Forge 1.20.4 with a version .jar. Right click on this and rename it to simply Forge. Dot jar, all lowercase, exactly like that. And again, if for whatever reason you didn't turn on file name extensions, it would just be forge, but forge.jar is what it should be there if file name extensions are on. Now to start this server, just double click on run.bat. It's gonna try to start, but it's gonna fail. The reason is because what we need to do is agree to the Minecraft EULA. Luckily, it generated this EULA.txt file here. So go ahead and open that up and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. And then go ahead and click File, Save. Now we've saved this EULA.txt file and we can double click the run.bat and the server will now start. It's that quick and easy to start your Forge server. Now at this point, you're the only person that can join it, like I mentioned. But we're going to go ahead and quickly do that just so you can show, see that it's working. It's also a good way to test, you know, the lag and see if your computer can handle the server, all of that stuff. But keep in mind, the most resource intensive part about a modded server is the mods. So we, we are going to have performance degradation as we add mods. But nevertheless, to join this server, you want to open up Minecraft. And like I said, anyone who is joining the server needs to have Forge and every mod that's on the server installed. Right now, there's no mods on the server. So we just need to make sure that we're playing Minecraft with our Forge installation. If we come up here to the top, we can see we do have this Forge installation here. We can go ahead and click play on that and open up Minecraft with it. Then from in game, how do we join this server? Well, in theory, we join it like any other Minecraft server. So what we want to do is go to multiplayer and then we'll go ahead and go to proceed and we can either add this server or direct connect. We'll go ahead and add the server and we'll name this modded server and then we'll go ahead and do the server address as localhost. So your IP address for this server is localhost, all one word exactly like that. And you're the only person that can join this server off of the localhost IP, but it's good at testing it here. So if we go ahead and click done. We'll notice that we have this modded server and we can double click on it to join it. OCS see joining over here on the left hand side. We're good to go. We can join the server. The server's up. Like I said, you can play around, see if you're lagging, all that stuff. And if you do want to add mods, you would simply add them to the mods folder here. So add them to the mods folder. Just make sure they're Forge 1.20.4 mods and that they're for the Forge mod loader, not NeoForge. NeoForge is a new mod loader and the mods are not compatible. So you want to make sure it's just for Forge and then add them in the mods folder. Then you're also going to need to add them in game and that can be added to your local mods folder. So if you come in here to the mods button, you can also click that on the main menu and then click open mods folder folder, you'll drag and drop them into here because everyone who joins the server needs to have the mods both here in their local mods folder. And then you also need to have them on the mods folder on the server right here, right? So both places need it. Everyone who joins it needs it locally and you need it on the server, but you can go ahead, test with mods, all that stuff. And if you can perform and things are looking good with you playing on the server, you're not lagging. You're not seeing a bunch of messages in chat about, you know, like delays and stuff. One, you know, message in chat about lag, probably okay. Two, okay-ish multiple over and over and over again, you're getting lag and uh, you can either add more RAM or you can, you know, go use a third-party host where, you know, things are set up for Minecraft hosting and all that stuff. Or unfortunately, you might just not be able to play with your friends on your server. But nevertheless, how do we, how do we at this point add our friends to the server? We're not lagging. Things look good. How do we let our friends join? Well, in order to do that, we're going to need to port forward. So disconnect, quit out of Minecraft, and we want to go ahead and stop the server. Always stop the server by coming over here in the console and typing the word stop with nothing else, just stop and then hit enter. 
And when you do that, it's going to stop the server properly and then press any key to continue. And now the server is closed. Everything's saved. That's the important part. Now, I do want to mention this Forge installer. We don't need that anymore and can delete it. Then what we want to do is go ahead and open up the CMD, the command prompt. So open up the Windows Start menu, type CMD, and you'll have command prompt here. Open this, and then in the command prompt, what we want to do is type IPCONFIG, IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. Then we want to get some numbers from here. I'm going to go ahead and make note of these in Notepad. We've used it a few times in this video. It's a favorite tool of mine. But we want to go ahead and make a note of a few of these things. But you can make the note of these in your desktop, wherever you, wherever you can keep track of these. So the first thing we need is the IPv4 here. And for me, that's 192.168.1.2. Yours is probably different. That's why I'm having you get this number yourself instead of just giving you the number because, well, if it was the same for everyone, I would just give you what the number was. For the default gateways, the other thing we need here, it's right down here. And for me, that's 192.168.1.1. But for you, it may be a list of numbers and letters. If that's the case, look at the line under it because the next line is probably just numbers and that's what we want. We want the one that's just numbers. Nevertheless, if I fix my little typo here, 192.168.1.1, that matches my default gateway, and 192.168.1.2 matches my IPv4 address. So we've got these. What do we do with these? Well, we want to go ahead and first open up our browser. Then we get to use the default gateway. And up here at the top where we would normally type in simplegamehosting.com, the breakdown of XYZ, YouTube.com, right up here at the top, you want to type in that default gateway. So I've already done that, 192.168.1.1, as you can see here. And then you want to go ahead and hit enter. Now, some sort of a login box is going to appear. Mine pops in from the top. It just could be in the center. It's probably going to look different from mine, but that's okay. But what do we enter into this login box? Well, it's going to be different than your Wi-Fi password. It's your router's username and password. And we have a link in the description down below that goes over exactly how to find your router's password. Start with method one, work all the way down through method five, and go through every single step here. Usually people find it by method four, and some people unfortunately do have to contact their ISP. But generally, you find it by method three or four, and you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and log into my router, and then we'll be able to go ahead and port forward to allow our friends to join. Once you've logged in, your router will probably look different than mine, but that's okay. I'm going to be giving you the common terms for port forwarding, but of course there's also an in-depth guide in the description on how to port forward on any router that goes through how to port forward on any router. We also have this video, and it's worth watching the video because you'll pick up terms, even if your router is not mentioned, of what port forwarding could be called. But I'm going to give you some right now too. Now for me, port forwarding is in advanced, it's in advanced again, and then it's in port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it could also be in advanced advanced, it could be in advanced and administration, it could be in just an administration tab, it could be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, it could be called apps and games. Gaming or gaming and apps. That's very, very popular. It could be in the security tab, the networking tab, the setup tab. It could be called port forwarding slash port triggering, port triggering slash port forwarding, or even just single port forwarding. Truly, there are tons of different things that port forwarding could be called, but don't be afraid to click around your router until you do find port forwarding here. Once you do find it, you want to go ahead and add a new port forward, add a custom service. You may just have a big, long list of empty boxes. Start with the first one and enter in the port forward information there. We want to add a new custom service or add a port forward here and then for the name or ID on the port forward we want to just go ahead and identify this as Minecraft forward server you can call it whatever you want but just make sure you know what the port forwards for later on for the protocol you want to make sure TCP slash UDP UDP slash TCP or both of these are selected for me I'm going to go ahead and select both of them here TCP slash UDP for our external ports our outside ports for anything inside port doesn't matter if the word port P-O-R-T is there you want to enter in 25565 25565 so external port inside port outside port first port second port public port private port doesn't matter if it has the word port 25565 and guess what next up we have internal port that's going to be 25565 as well because it has the word port there last but not least for our internal or our local ip address this is going to be that ipv4 address we found earlier so 192.168.1.2 now you may not be able to enter in an ip address there you instead may have a big long drop down box of all the devices on your network i actually have that too and we can see right there is my ip address for my IPv4. I can select that there as well. Either way, you want to select the device that you're starting your server on, either using that IPv4 address or by selecting it from the dropdown box. Now, for 99% of you, you're going to go ahead and click apply. You're done. But there are some people that will need their public or external IP address for a port forward. 
Guess what? Every single person watching this video needs that because that's how their friends are going to join the server. So in the description down below, we have a link to here. Now, most of this is covered up, but you can see 4.3 here, but you want to go ahead and click to copy your IP address. Why is this covered up? Because you don't want to give it out to anybody and everybody, and that's why it's so important to only give this server to your friends, your family, people you trust, and if you do want to make a more public server and not have to worry about security and all that stuff, you want to create a server with simple game hosting right here. Nevertheless, go ahead, click to copy that, and now we can go back to our router if we did need our IP address there, a public IP, paste that in. Otherwise, let's go ahead and join via our public IP address. To do that, we want to go ahead and start the server with a run.bat file and then as I mentioned a million times we want to go ahead and make sure we're playing Minecraft with Forge because you need to play Minecraft with Forge and have any mods that are on the server installed locally as well in order to join the server so you your friends everybody who is playing on the server needs the mods that are on the server installed locally that's where mod packs come in because all the mods can easily be in sync because everybody's downloading them from Curse Forge or Moderate the same source keeping everything in sync. But nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and launch up Minecraft with Forge. I'm coming in here and clicking play on our Forge installation with that selected. And I'll meet you on the main menu to join this server. There we go. We're on the Minecraft main menu. We can go ahead and click on multiplayer and click proceed. And then go ahead and add a server. Now I'm going to name this our public IP because that's what we're joining via this, you know, our public IP. And then paste this in. You can only see 4.3 again just to show you that it's the same number as earlier. But so it's private. We've blacked everything else out. And then click done. Now we have our modded server here. We have both the local connection and the public IP. Now what we want to do is go ahead and join this. Now I know if I double click on the public IP, it's going to work. You'll see me join in over here on the left hand side. Uh, you might not be able to see me because it does show the IP address over there, but nevertheless, I'm joining in. This is the same server as earlier, but what if you can't? Well, some internet service providers, some ISPs don't allow you to connect back to yourself via your public IP. But that's okay. You don't need to. You can use that local connection, that local host IP address that we found earlier. Your friends can join via your public IP and then you're good to go, right? If your friends can't join your, using your public IP, we have guides in the description down below on how to allow Windows Defender Firewall, an open Windows Defender Firewall to allow connections. That's most likely what's blocking your friends from joining. It could also be an antivirus or a firewall on your router or another sort of security software on your computer, so be sure to check that. Also, make sure to turn off VPNs. There's also a guide in the description down below on how to fix Minecraft servers. There's tons of different stuff in that video. It goes over modded servers, plugin servers, vanilla servers, all of that. So go check that out as well if you do have any issues with Minecraft servers and fixing things like that. It's literally like 20 minutes to me just troubleshooting different Minecraft server issues. At this point though, your modded server is up and running. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. We'll be happy to help. And should you want to add mods? Again, we covered that kind of in the middle of the video. Add them to the mods folder on the server. Add them to your local mods folder. Have anyone who's joining the server add them to their local mods folder as well. And then restart the server. Your mods will be active and you can join. Nevertheless, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if we helped. And I'm out. Peace.